question. I, I wonder, this is, this is an interesting story only because for the longest time, we've known that inflation represents the bigger threat overall to markets and the economy. But more and more CEOs are citing that word, recession, in their commentary and analyst calls and investor days. Is now the threat of a recession greater than inflation? Thanks, Dom. Look, I think throughout the year, there's been this really, really big disconnect where you're right. CEOs are mentioning a recession. Uh, everyday Americans are concerned about a recession. Wall Street is concerned about a recession. However, when you look at the data, it certainly doesn't seem like we are in a recession or that one is imminent. You know, you look at the labor market data, um, unemployment near a record low. And, and last, last month, we did see that prices are coming down just a little bit. So I actually think that Wall Street, as, as the Wall Street Journal reported over the weekend, has been kind of warming uh, to the soft landing thesis in recent months. And a recent Goldman analysis showed that many investors, mutual funds and hedge funds, are overweight. Things like materials, cyclicals, uh, energy stocks, you know, the types of companies that would do well if the economy were doing well. And the recent New York Fed data this morning also showed that consumers' inflation expectations are coming down and they're feeling confident about the job market, all of which points to that soft landing thesis. The slowdown fears you think might be overblown. That, it, Yeah, it, it's certainly become more consensus, Gunjan, that um, that maybe we can have that slowdown without a hard landing. And and you, th you think maybe not so much the case. Well, I, I do think that they may be overblown. You know, they have been such a big worry throughout the year. And think about how many investors were warning, hey, we're going to see a recession in 2022. It's imminent. It's imminent. And we just have not seen that show up in the data. I think that the economy has held up so much better than many feared. And that really is putting, you know, the onus on inflation. It's it's making investors hyper-focused on these CPI release dates, which have just been growing more and more volatile throughout the year. Um, think about, you know, the Nasdaq's 7% move uh, last month after the CPI came in cooler than expected. People are really watching for signs that that's going to keep on easing up. Gunjan, the, the, the one thing that we've been talking a lot about is this kind of conflict, right, between the jobs data not supporting this recessionary narrative and other signs that do. I, I wonder, throughout your reporting, has there been any kind of a tilt, perhaps, in the story about recession and jobs? Do you think as though all the layoffs that we've been reporting on, all of the job cuts that we've been saying, are not enough, and I say this in a very kind of tongue-in-cheek manner, are they not enough to move the needle because they are only affecting a certain small part of the tech and media sectors as opposed to, say, the broader manufacturing, industrial, or energy, or utility sectors? Totally. I mean, it's just a tale of two two worlds when you when you think about what we're seeing in in tech layoffs, right? And tech is in one of its biggest downturns since the dot com bubble burst. But at the same time, there's just so much demand for for workers in in other parts of the economy. You know, I'm thinking of of my Wall Street Journal colleagues article about how some people are hiring without even interviewing candidates, right? There's just so much demand out there. Um, and, and we saw that trickle into the wage figure in the recent jobs report, where there's just so much competition for workers. And um, again, that takes us back to, I think, inflation being a top priority for investors right now. And, and before we let you go, the markets have been reacting in a certain way. They've been very kind of wait and see, if you will. And a lot of that has to do with the Fed meeting, we understand, this, this week and whatnot. But there are expectations that the, at least the first part of next year in 2023, Gunjin, could be one in a situation where the markets are fairly range-bound for a certain part of it as people try to figure out what that economic story is and what the ripple effects on the markets are. Is that the way that folks are looking at it from an investor standpoint in your mind? You know, instead of range bound, I would argue that people are positioned for things to go even lower from here. I think Wall Street is so, so bearish right now. We saw mutual funds increase the, the percentage of their portfolio that's sitting in cash to 2.5% recently, up from around 1.5% at the start of the year. We've seen investors ramp up bearish bets against the market through stock futures, NASDAQ futures, S&P 500 futures, Russell futures, to some of the highest levels ever. 
They've pared back on some of those positions lately, but they are far, far from bullish right now. So I think Wall Street is still pretty bearish out there right now. And I think, again, that brings us back to inflation and, and the Fed raising rates.